New York. You know, no, it's it's like the thing. It's sort of so fascinating in my lifetime watching New York go from like seventies New York to like nineties. Let's clean the streets up and sort of have this kind of brief Indian summer of order in these cities. And what people forget about the sort of Indian summer of order, which they think sort of happened naturally and has nothing to do with basically uh, what other people call mass incarceration <laughs> and, and, you know, stop and frisk policing and sort of all of these kind of somewhat reactionary policies really came back. They didn't allow police to like beat people of color with complete impunity as was done in the past. Um, you know, but it was like, if you were a gangbanger and you went into Manhattan or lower Manhattan where you're not supposed to be, what would happen is you would get basically um, harassed by the police. Um, that was what stop and frisk really meant. Stop and frisk meant, number one, if you brought your piece there because you intended to have some kind of you know, mutual combat gang battle, um, mm -hmm. that wasn't going to work. And number two, you were just going to get hassled. You know, you were going to lose your weed. You were going to like, you know, and you're just like, man, you know, like, why even, right? You know, right. and one of the things people don't understand about the, the lower classes and especially the underclass is that they're kind of very conservative with a small C. And this makes it really, really hard for social scientists who are tracking their behaviors because you basically change the rules and say, okay, now actually gangbangers, yeah, come to, come to Greenwich Village with your piece, you know, uh, we don't mind, you know, we're not going to violate, violate your civil rights. This is new condoler, gentler New York. And it takes them years basically to sort of ch for the culture to change and realize the level of impunity that they're operating under. And so basically that lag makes it really, really hard to like trace the correlation in terms of social science statistics. You're basically like, oh, we eliminated stop and frisk and, you know, hey, uh, you know, crime hasn't hardly gone up, maybe, well, I'm a little on, you know, and then, you know, because the consequence of stop and frisk was a cult cultural change, it takes a while for that cultural change to sort of automatically, you know, reverse itself in a sense. And so you basically, you know, what created the world of the 70s was about 15 years of basically progressives in the judiciary sort of eliminating the consequences for bad behavior and especially like small time bad behavior. And as these consequences were eliminated, you were basically changing the culture to make it actually necessary to perform these behaviors because there was basically no risk of it. And you know, when you basically take away that risk again, okay, yeah, it was were murder rates in the US up by 30, 40%, you know, last year. I mean, that's still from a, you know, we're still not quite at the like 80s peak, but uh, it's impressive progress. And I think we'll get there. You know, and <laughs> yeah. and and 30% year over year, I don't <laughs> care whether you're an investor or a criminal, those are not rookie numbers, you know. And and so so yeah, like I, you know, I don't know if this matches your feeling. Are both of you guys are, are in New York? I guess or you're in the same room over there. Um, no, no, I live in but, Las Vegas. Oh man, Vegas, Vegas. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a uh, um um not my not my favorite part of Nevada. I'm afraid. But um, Reno, the, you're a Reno guy. You look like a Reno guy. Do I look like a Reno guy? Yeah, I definitely prefer Reno. Um, and <laughs> actually, and, and the thing is also, you know, Reno, uh, you know, becomes more classy if you say it. Um, like, I mean, it's originally a French name, right? Like the actor, Jean Fanon, right? And, you know, if yeah, you say, oh, when yeah, people no. say Reno, you know, when you say, you know, Reno, you say no, Fanon, you know, and... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, no. Anyway, uh, um, um yeah, Southern Nevada is a pit. It's like full of like scorpions and Democrats, basically. Um, <laughs> and, um, this is true. The uh, and and, and the, yeah, and, and the Democrats vote, and so do the scorpions, you know. But um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Anyway, anyway, back to back to New York. Does this does this match, Anthony? Does this match your feeling about the path that New York is taking in the post pandemic era? Yeah, yeah, it's it's just a failed kind of city. It, nothing, yeah, yeah. nothing works. Nothing runs on time. No, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Top down. Doesn't matter where you go. Doesn't matter if you go to the the nicest places or 
And then um, there's this like enormous yeah, like, giving a shit bureaucracies everywhere. It's like basically this is the city that like actually believes in that it sort of spends a huge amount of effort on giving a shit and actually doesn't give a shit at all. Yeah, um, yeah. The, oh, yeah. There's always there's I mean, I, I see it on the lampposts. So there's going to be a town meeting at this time. It doesn't fucking matter. It's all about yeah, yeah. bike lanes and shit. Yeah, right, it's, right, it's, right. It's right. About, but yeah, on the other hand, you know, it's it's still you know, what's fucked up is that it's still kind of the center of the world in some ways, in many important ways, New York is the center of the world. And, you know, to see that the center of the world is like fucking rotting is a yeah. really grim, it's a grim, grim experience. Yeah. And the people uh, like shitting on it is like, uh, it's, it's especially if you're an American, if you're shitting on New York and hoping for it to fail, it's like, dude, I mean, it's going to just expand into wherever you are. Yeah, you know, exactly. If, if, exactly. Yeah. Like New York in the seventies wasn't even on the verge of failing. It wasn't like, you know, were like media companies leaving New York in the 70s? No, I don't think so. You right. know, it just became increasingly dystopian. And th this is something that people don't really realize. You know, I had a like um, um, at this event recently, I had an onstage debate with Mike Anton. Um, oh, oh. And, and he, um, great guy, lovely guy, but, you know, he's still, he's, he's kind of a, he's kind of a normie in some ways. And one of the sort of very cherished beliefs of the normie conservative that sort of they have in these dark times is that this cannot go on and somehow shit is so fucked up god is not going to tolerate it and shit is going to break and you know and i'm just like man this is cope 